L-theanine inside of it. That is activated by the different compounds in the yerba mate that we put inside of it as well. This just increases the compounds you already have. This is what you're actually designed to run on. Exactly. It's kind of like a Carl run on one form of junkie gas, but it runs really good on what it's designed for. You will find Brain Force, Survival Shield X2, and other game-changing products at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula. This is an EPA super fun site on fire. The leachate has, is leaking now. We can see it coming out. They are trying to scoop up as much of this material as they possibly can. Uh, 10,000 gallons of this stuff has now leaked, leaking, and they're trying to clean this up as fast as they can. This is a crazy scene down here at the Westlake Landfill. Liam Mackett reporting for InfoWars.com. I know this is crazy, but we are back here out at the Westlake Landfill. I uh, wanted to go ahead and get some Geiger counter readings of our own, just for our own peace of mind. Um, really lucky to report that they're sticking around the high 40s, uh, not going up to that threshold, that radiation threat ho threshold that we're warned about. Now, what you witnessed last night was the leachate leak here. And of course, leachate uh, is liquid that moves throughout the landfill. And what it does is it's collecting uh, those undesirable particulates that are in the landfill. It's not really a big deal um, it, unless, of course, it leaks out. It, it can cause pollution and it smells really, really bad. The issue with this landfill is that this is now a radio radioactive uh, landfill and so if you are collecting particulates of that radioactive material and then of course the leachate tank suddenly leaks out 10,000 gallons of that fluid that is not a good thing for this community and that is why so many people are concerned that this is not a stable site um, now th what you're seeing over here you're, the crews are still trying to clean it up uh, they're still out here today we did see some people actually wearing masks there when they were messing around with the dirt and uh, pumping out the water and everything uh, could just be from the smell. Now, this right here is actually the Bridgeton landfill. This is where you're getting those reports of the underground fire, which is basically an exothermic chemical reaction. It's causing a lot of heat there with those chemicals. And the Westlake landfill, it's all in the same compound. It's on the same uh, acreage, so that the same area the Westlake landfill that contains the Manhattan Project waste is just over that hill. So the radioactive materials, there's no barrier in between this landfill and the other landfill, and that is what is the big problem. They're trying to find out what exactly was in that leachate, what exactly here, uh, what type of materials are coming out. Now, we reported yesterday that we were experiencing a burning sensation in our chest as well as our nose and throat. Uh, felt very stuffed up this morning when we woke up, and uh, some of the so what some of the residents have reported before and what they found uh, is a benzene, which is obviously a known carcinogen. It can cause birth defects as well as cancer. Um, you've heard of that before, but that's uh, probably, you know, what we, that smell was. I, I don't know for sure, but um, if I had to take a guess, that's what residents have found that's been happening in the past. And if you think about it, we had to experience that for one day. It was terrible. But there are families out here that have to experience that every single day. Children that wait at the bus stop just down the street every single day. So the issue is, is that we need to get this site under control. It's a big deal. And this Manhattan Project waste is dumped all over the city. Now, we're going to be putting out some more reports. We spoke with some of these families, uh, some of the families that have been experiencing the cancer clusters um, and what they're trying to do with the city to get this taken care of. So stay tuned to InfoWars.com for more reports. And it's that type of behavior that spurred me to do the research to develop a true nutraceutical formula that was designed to smooth out and help children focus. All of our children are hit with modern mind control. Television, music, fast food, GMOs, sugars, you name it. Young humans have not yet developed their nervous system and are being hammered daily by globalist concoctions. It's no wonder they can't focus and calm down and then are put on dangerous psychotropic drugs. Working with my 
team, we set out to find the best formula with the highest quality ingredients that children would actually like and take. We worked with the leading manufacturer in nutritional supplements that are safe for children to bring you the most affordable and powerful calming formula out there. Introducing Child Ease with herbs and calming extracts like chamomile and lemon balm and essential nutrients that taste great. Obtain your Child Ease today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's Child Ease exclusively at InfoWarsLife.com. Knockout is back. If you want a product that has 10 known ingredients that naturally get your body to relax, your brain to relax, so you get deep, restful sleep, knockout's it. InfoWarsLife.com. L-theanine, hops flower extract, lemon balm extract, valerian root extract, chamomile flower extract, L-tryptophan extract, melatonin, and more. All organic, all the natural sources. It's the same price as leading brands of melatonin that are three milligrams a piece. It has three milligram, the standard recommended dose for an adult. It's got the GABA. So it would probably cost $50 to take all this as separate pills. It's $19.95. You take one or two of these, and it just is really clean, restful sleep is what the reviews are. It's what I've experienced. And it just synergistically puts everything in there. InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Or call 888-253-3139. Welcome back to the InfoWars Nightly News live coverage of the third GOP debate. We're going to have our final comments here in our last segment. And I guess, Jakari and Joe, one of the things that I looked at this, uh, I thought it's just a total lack of outside the box thinking when it came to Medicaid or came to taxation, or whatever. I guess I should say a lack of outside of Washington, D.C. thinking because it's the same thing that we hear every election from every politician, whether they're running for president or they're running for Congress. That is all this. Micromanagement of uh, income tax rates, you know, which, which, what income levels are we going to tax people, at what rates, and all this kind of stuff. And it, and nothing about really fixing the fundamental problems, nothing about addressing uh, the income tax. We didn't hear anything at all about the Trans Pacific Partnership. Of course, we were told that we were going to hear about that right. uh, after it was passed. We're now 24 days tomorrow, as people see this, 24 days and counting. They have not allowed us to know anything about this because we are not the stakeholders. The stakeholders are the guys who are pulling the strings on these puppets that were on the stage tonight. But I think uh, I want to get your comments on uh, what you thought about this particular debate and, and what uh, CNBC did with it. Well, as we often talk about, you know, it's it's the same template as uh, Fiorina pointed out multiple times. She was talking about how they just keep saying the same things that they've been saying for the last election yeah. cycles. but. At the same time, nobody's offering any real type of uh, policy change. Or I would go in here, I'd fix this, I'd do that. They talk about the problem. Everybody knows there's a problem. Yeah. People who don't watch this debate know that knows there's a problem just because they go through it on their daily lives. We all agree that there is a problem, but very few people had any type of answer. And the answers they did have sometimes weren't exactly the best. No solutions. Raising the age of uh, ridiculous. Social Security I'm sorry. That, that's and, completely and changing ridiculous. the rates and the income levels, that's not a solution. Look. I just want to get serious with you guys. I came into this and I had some real concerns. An issue, one particular issue, I just wanted some answers about. And that's the direction our country is going with fantasy football. <laughs> and we brought that up today in the GOP debate. That's right. I mean, by God. I we, mean, I think everybody at the at the wing stop in Buffalo Wild Wings are, you know, sighing a great sigh of relief. And that's just it. You know, Chris Christie had a good performance. And that's what it is, is a performance. And I guess that's one of the things people are looking for. Of course, you know, he still remains an authoritarian jerk who is in violation of the Constitution most of the time. He wants to lock everybody up. But he had a good performance tonight. I think Rubio had a good performance. Curry. Clearly, CNBC was coming after him. It showed the coordination of CNBC with the Jeb Bush people because it was exactly the talking points that came out of the meeting with his mommy and daddy and, his, and their donors this weekend. They were going to come after uh, Rubio for being an absentee, inexperienced senator like uh, uh, Obama, and he was ready for that, and he deflected that criticism. He, he deflected the criticism coming after him for being in debt personally and all that sort of thing. So he had had a good performance too. I, think. I thought I, I'm not really a big fan of Cruz, but I thought he handled himself quite exceptionally. And I, yeah. and I at one point in time I thought he was literally just going to walk off the stage, and I was hoping he was going to do that, and I was hoping that everyone would follow suit. And walk right off and go, you know what, this is a complete and total joke. 
You guys have wasted two hours of my life that I'll never get back. Now let's go work on some of these issues, and maybe the next debate we can actually talk about something real besides fantasy football. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Come on. It, it yeah. was ridiculous, and I do echo that point. I think this is actually going to make people sympathetic to some of the people who are on the stage. You know, people who have really no interest in politics or the GOP. They're going to see how CNBC handled this debate and almost give sympathy to the people on the stage because they had to endure this just ridiculous show by the pundits there. Well, I think it was that the whole fantasy football thing. There was a reference to that because Rubio had done a, a take on fantasy football, talking about uh, about Bush and Carson, I think, and then talking about it being fan real football players. Okay, so that was a reference, and that was another example of the tight coordination of CNBC with the Bush campaign. I think also the fact that they gave so much time to John Kasich. That was absolutely amazing. Here's a guy who's polling zero, mm -hmm. zero in the polls, and look at how much time he got. They completely ignored Trump, and then that thing at the end where Trump said, "Hey, I negotiated down from three hours to two hours," and they said, "Nah, never happened." That's a lie. Trump was telling the truth about that because there were multiple articles throughout the week with Trump and with Carson and with uh, the Rand Paul campaign all saying, look, if you guys, we, you know, you're saying you're going to do three hours or two and a half hours, whatever, we're not going to do that. You're going to cut it down to two hours. You're going to have an opening and a closing statement or we're not coming. It seemed like the moderators got most of their bullet points from like the gossip column. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. None of them were truth based, mm -hmm. truth, I mean, factual whatsoever. Each one of those candidates was able to sit there and go, you know what, you're lying completely. And not one of them could stand up with any fact, any kind of mm -hmm. proof that what they just said was true. They just mm -hmm. they ran through some kind of, you know, what are those fake papers, the Inquisitor or something like that. And yeah. flipped through it and saw some, you know, alien coming down off of a space shuttle or whatever like that. Bat boy. And, yeah, yeah and, and, and that's what that's they just true. used. We're told, yeah, bat boy in your basement. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I mean, well, there's going to be a lot of fact checking. And I think one of the metrics, you know, because everybody's going to say, well, you know, with his his tax rates and all this. Well, Drudge is already out. Drudge has already released a poll. 72% apparently say Trump has won this, yeah. which I don't know how. He didn't really say much. Yeah. yeah. It seemed like it well, was it the, uh, the, the Kasich like show. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, Chris Christie had a lot to say. Well, they allowed him to say a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of the metrics that people are going to do when they go back and they look at this, they're going to try to do some number crunching. But I think one of the numbers that needs to be crunched is to look and see how and they do this with every debate, but I think it'll be very interesting in this debate to see what percentage of time was given to which candidates. You right. know, Rand Paul had. Oh, Rand Paul had the least amount. It was amount. just absolutely amazing how much time they gave to Kasich. Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I forgot even existed the first two debates. Yeah, that's right. Not until this one, am I like, wait, who is this guy? This tall guy standing over there. <laughs> you know, it's also yeah. going to be interesting. I, I don't recall. Maybe you guys do recall. I don't recall Rubio talking about this budget deal. You know, extending the debt ceiling. Okay, Cruz criticized it. Rand Paul said two times he's going to filibuster it. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Cruz will probably uh, join him with that, probably vote against it. But it seems to me like Rubio was very quiet about yeah, that. Yeah, I recall you, to see how you make it, made, made that point during the debate. I can't recall if he actually said anything about yeah. it. Yeah, well, I remember the last debate, the one prior to this, uh, previous to this. I mean, he uh, actually came out at the very end, and they pulled him aside, and brought him over to the desk to uh, speak to the moderators. Like, you know, what, what if you could do anything? What would it be? He said, well, I, I would definitely ramp up security at the airports. I'd like to get a lot more TSA in there, a lot more security. Oh, That's great. a great idea for someone like you who never has to fly commercially <laughs> like I do. Because yeah. I'm sorry, I'm tired of guys like Chris Christie filling me up every time I try to fly from here to Denver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And of course, the other senator that's in the race on the Republican side is Lindsey Graham. And then the earlier junior varsity debate, which we did not cover here. Uh, he was just going down a laundry list. There wasn't a Defense Department program that he didn't want to give a massive increase to. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, just before, just as they were coming on here, the CNBC crew said, yeah, Mitt Romney just uh, tweeted out or contacted us and said, that's my man for president. Boy, you know, that's exactly what we're going to get. They love that kind of thing. That's it for tonight's news. Thanks for joining us. This has uh, been uh, our live coverage of the third GOP debate. I'm David Knight with Jakari Jackson and Joe Biggs. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow. Carbon Ponzi scheme champion Al Gore has begun yet another highly publicized tweet about climate change. The Daily Caller reports a new study by the Harvard School of Public Health claims carbon dioxide has a direct and negative impact on human cognition and decision making. 
In response, Al Gore immediately tweeted, important piece by Joe Rahm at Think Progress on the direct negative impact CO2 has on human cognition and decision making. Essentially, the Harvard study exposed 24 humans to a six-day regimen of volatile organic